All right, so this week uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at blues rhythm. And I wanted to continue kind of what we did last week. Last week, I did a, a one finger blues. And I showed you how you can play a blues composition by yourself with just one finger. And the point of that was to keep it simple and get all the technique out of the way. Well, that was a very popular lesson. I got a lot of comments and a lot of feedback. And a lot of people asking if I could keep going with that kind of uh, idea. And so we're going to stay in the same key. We're going to stay in the key of A. But I wanted to talk about a, a classic blues rhythm that's played when you're playing a real slow, like a 6-8 blues. Uh, and it doesn't get talked about enough. It's a T-Bone Walker jazz style to playing blues rhythm. But it just sounds great for a slow blues. And so that's what we're going to look at in this video. And I'm going to show you how you can play it in two positions. Uh, using two different shapes. And we'll also look at how you can take those chord shapes and slide them around and, and create some embellishments with that. Okay, so this chord is connected to your A major chord, and that's just your A bar chord. That's how I think of it anyway. You have to connect it to something, right? So this is the perfect anchor for that. So if you think about playing your E chord down in first position, if you were to slide that up capo with your finger on the uh, fifth fret, you'd be playing an A chord. That's an A bar chord. Well, if I look at where that fifth fret is, that's where my bar is, that's where my fingers are going to line up. So my ring finger, my pinky, from this chord that we're playing here, the T-Bone Walker chord, fit into that, uh, into that root fret, that fifth fret. And that allows me to easily get to this chord in any key. So if I wanted to do it in the key of G, for example, if I'm my G bar chord, there's that chord. Okay, so let me show you how you make the chord. It's actually very easy to co chord to make because we're just going to take the D chord shape uh, from first position, the D chord that you know how to make, and we're just going to remake that chord here. And when you do that, your index finger is on the fourth fret, fifth string. So you've got that sound, and then you add your pinky to the fifth fret, second string. So in, in actual fact, when you look at the chord, it makes a little uh, box there where you've got two fingers on the fourth fret and then two fingers on the fifth fret, and they're kind of staggered. And you're playing the middle four strings. You're not playing the high E or the low E. And that's that chord shape. And that chord would be considered an A9. It's actually an A9 with a C sharp in the bass. That's how I think of it. So it's an A9 over C sharp. Now, you know, there's different ways you could look at the chord. It could be also considered a C sharp minor seven flat five, but that doesn't do us any good because we're in, playing in the key of A, so we want to relate everything in terms of the chords we're going to be, be making to the chords that we're playing. So that's how you make that chord, it's an A9. Now, what's nice about this chord is you can slide it one fret above, one fret below, and then back to the where the root position. So that allows you to play that that kind of stormy Monday thing. So that's what T-Bone Walker would do. He uses that chord in, in really just about everything. And you, you realize that with a lot of the old blues guys, they would have their little bag of licks that they would use and they would just repurpose them over and over again. But that's what gave them their sound. And that's how we know Albert King and T-Bone and BB and all of those guys is by those things that they just would repeat and they would drill into our brains. So it's okay to repeat yourself. So you remember that all the blues legends did it. So don't feel bad about that. If you keep feel like you keep doing the same thing, maybe that's just your sound. Okay, so that's the, the chord. That's how you can relate it to the major bar chord. So now you can find it. So let's do this first as a, pr a little practice. Uh, if you can make that chord then, grab your guitar and make it with me. So that's the one chord. Now let's go to the four chord in the blues, which will be a, a D. So we're playing that, we're playing this in the key of A. So the four chord's a D. So let's look at where our D chord is using that bar chord shape. That would be up here. Uh, so you're barring on the 10th fret. So that means to make that T-bone chord or that D9 chord, we can make it like that. So now we've got the A, A9, and now we've got the D9. To get to the five chord, you just go up two frets from there, always. Whatever you're doing for your four, you just go up two more frets, and there's your five chord. So there's a five, which is the E9, back to the D9, and then back to the A9. So let's start off by just staying in that one position like that, and then we'll get more uh, efficient with it. But um, if you were to play a blues like this, go to the four chord, 
then back to the one chord. You can go up a half step. Now watch this. Now to get back to the four chord, sometimes I hear T-bone go like this. Really cool, right? Just walking it straight up. So taking that same shape and literally going up one fret each time. It works out so that you land on the four chord. And you can slide up one fret back, back to the one. And then we go to the five chord. We can slide up one and then down to the chord, back to the four, and then back to the one. Okay, so that's our first thing. Now we got just sort of the feel. You just wanna put it in your ear first. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to, instead of jumping around so much, we're gonna be more efficient with the way that we make the chord. So we can make the four chord off of the A shape. So this is where it starts to get really interesting. The one chord we made off of the E shape, right? We can picture that. Now, if we play the A shape for the four chords, that would be our D chord when we're playing it here, it's right in position where we were with the one chord. So it makes, it, it makes a lot more sense to play the one, the four, and then the five up here, right? So there's our four chord. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make this shape, which is a D, it's a D9, but we're just making it in a different spot. So to make this, we're gonna play the D7 chord shape. Think of your D7 chord that you learned in first position. You're gonna take that same shape, but you're gonna play it here so that your middle finger is on the fifth fret, fifth string. Sounds like that. And that's gonna be your D, and this is gonna be part of your D9. We're just gonna take our pinky now and bar strings one and two on the fifth fret and listen. You can play all five strings and that gives you a really big full sounding D9 chord. So now you've got your A9 over C sharp for the one. You've got your D9 for your four chord. And then back to the one chord, right? And now to get to the five chord, remember what I said, you just always go up two frets from whatever you were doing for the four chord. There's your E9 for the five chord. Walk it back down for the four chord to the D9 and then back to the one chord. So now I've got it in this convenient little box here where I can play the entire song in one area without having to jump around as much. There's time when you want to jump around, like especially when you're doing that, that kind of thing. I mean, there's a reason for that. But it's nice to keep all your chords in one area because it allows you to work in some fill licks if you want to do that. And in, they don't have to be fancy. You can stay within that minor pentatonic scale pattern one and just throw them in in between the chords. So you could do something like. Right now I'm starting to feel like a rhythm player, just going back and forth between those chords and those fill legs. So now let's look at one more way of playing this. So instead of playing it all in one position here, what if I showed you two spots in the neck where you can play the one, four, five, still in the same key. So instead of me play, starting with the E shape for the one chord, what if I started with the A shape for the one chord? So uh, now if I'm down here, I, I'm running out of room to demonstrate this. So I'm gonna play it up here. So that would be the A shape. I'm playing the A chord, but just using the A shape out of cage, playing it up here. You wouldn't normally do that, but again, it's to prove a point. But I'm gonna go ahead and make the nine chord off of that chord shape. Now that's what I was using when I was playing the four chord here, but now I'm doing it here. Hopefully that makes sense. This is the A nine chord. So that's our one chord. So then that means our four chord is the D chord. And instead of me using this D, I'm gonna make it play the D here because it's closer, right? So that means I play the little box shape. So that's my four chord. So I'm basically just reversing everything I did. So now I've got this for the one chord. Here's the four. Right, back to the one. I can slide it like I did before. There's the four, and then we go to the five. We just go up two frets, back to the four and back to the one. The only last little thing I'm gonna throw in is instead of playing that where I've, I'm cramming all the fingers into, into these frets like this, what I can do if I just wanna play the triad is I can just bar 
like we did last week, and this is sort of how it ties into last week, we talked about the A6 to the A9 chord. You can use that same technique where I, I just go like that and let that represent the A chord, right? Instead of getting the full chord, I'm just getting the triad. And if you had a full band, you had a bass player going, it would sound great and it would totally be in context. Even if you don't, as long as you play the bass note, it, it makes sense to your ear. All right, well, hopefully that's giving you some ideas for the T-Bone Walker style, uh, you know, chord arrangement and just giving you some different ways to think about uh, playing a slow blues rhythm. All right, we'll see you next week for something new.